I think the biggest opportunity with digital marketing is the fact that we now can talk to our customers through so many different vehicles and we can also be much more relevant than we've ever been able to be before. So what we're starting to understand is how we connect up different parts of the Walt Disney Company to different audiences. All consumers are changing. We're a brand obviously with a heartland in kids and families, which we've been very successful of and, and hopefully will continue to be. But what we've been able to do is to see that there are other audiences out there that are engaging with us, particularly in the social space. So we've really kind of put a lot of effort into how we can connect with different audiences. We're looking at what our consumers are wanting, where they are in terms of what they're buying, and we respond accordingly. What we've got now with Disney Life, which is this really exciting solution of being able to provide content directly to our consumers, we're now starting to be able to connect up those people that are watching, whether it's a movie, a TV series, and those people that are purchasing something, we're starting to be able to connect up that and to see whether it's the same type of person. Obviously, it's not in terms of the actual individual, but it's whether that person is the same type of person that's watching something on Disney Life, that's buying something from Disney Store. So that's a whole new area that we're getting into, which is really exciting. We watch our competitors, uh, we do look at all the data points that come in, but we're not obsessed by it. What we're obsessed by is being really the very best across lots of different categories that we're in um, to, to stay ahead. And probably other people are, are watching us more closely and, and maybe following in, in our footsteps. So data that I think is overhyped, which I th don't think I'm alone in, is things like likes, for example. It's a nice metric, but I think we often get you know, a hundred thousand, a million, five million, ten million, and some people can kind of go bonkers over that and think, oh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's a really nice metric, but it's not necessarily going to tell you that that is the product or the piece of content that is going to do the very best once it comes out in its full length or when, once the product is, is released. I, I honestly can't think of one that's undervalued because, you know, we're, we're looking at so many that, you know, it's so diverse. Um, I do think at looking at uh, consumer behaviour is something that we're really, you know, quite obsessed by. We look at our audiences in quite a detailed way. So we don't look at really um, ages of people, but we look at stages of people. So from a child from naught all the way through to 90, you know, when they become an adult, we're looking at the different types of um, interests that they have and the different uh, you know, learnings that they've gone through and their behavioural traits. For us, that's massively important, rather than just obsessing on age. If you just obsess on age, one little boy of four can actually act very similarly to a boy of eight if they've got siblings or what, depending on their family dynamic. So if I could invent a metric, I mean, I think for us, um, desire to purchase or desire to engage and it be a desire that is absolute you know is is amazing you know as I say we get a lot of people liking our stuff but actually if there was a way of people saying I like stuff and I am absolutely then going to watch that movie go and buy that product go and see that experience so I guess desire to purchase in a very confident way uh, would be something that I'd love to see more of. Clearly for us what's really important as a brand that bases itself on quality and, and very importantly on trust, we need to be really confident at where our advertising and our content ends up. So I'd love to see more transparency as I know lots of other brands would. 